Hello, everyone. Hope everyone's having a good day. We're gonna, we got a few people uh, straggling, so we'll wait just a minute and then we will get started. Are people able to put in into the chat? I don't know if they're able to or not, but if they are, um, I usually like to ask like where people are calling in from. I'm always really curious. Or in this case, like um, what kind of funding have you received so far for your business? If people are there, folks from Austin. Oh, okay. Chat is disabled. I got it. Okay, good to know. Elizabeth, um, do you know how to undisable it? I do. I was about to ask, are you guys okay with that? Yes, we are. All right. There you go, everyone. We'd love to hear from you, all of you. Uh, where are you calling in from? What are the types of funding you have received from your business? We'd love to hear that. So thank you for letting us know. Hi, Jesse. Thanks for letting us know uh, that it was disabled. So it should be able You can do that now. Yay, <laughs> hi. Awesome. All right, and if you can try to, so the hosts are, um, so you should have two options if it's capable so everyone can see um, your answers. Just make sure that the little blue tab at the very bottom where it says everyone or host or panelist, switch that to everyone so everyone can see those uh uh, where people are calling in from. So I know that uh, we have some folks from Toronto, Shopify Capital. Jason, you can talk to them about them, I assume. I can and I will. <laughs> Good. I'm excited for that. Jason, what about you? Have you had to raise money for a business before other than 8FIG? Um, yeah, mostly I've worked in, uh, financial technology startups in my career, uh, typically venture backed. Um, uh, mm -hmm. I guess one thing that would make us similar, there's not a lot of similarities. Um, uh, but I think one thing that would make us similar to some e-commerce businesses is we have to raise our own debt as well. So we have to raise equity to, to fund and grow our operation, you know, hire people, build technology, hire engineering teams, uh, build an app, build a website, uh, build a risk team, data analysis team. Uh, but at the end of the day, we're funding deals. We're funding growth plans and I'll delve into that. And so we need funding in order to fund those plans. Um, so there is some overlap there where, you know, we have to look at institutional debt providers uh, to have money to fund into the deals. So you're not getting them, you're getting the money when you work with 8FIG. Uh, it's the money's coming directly from us. Uh, we're not a broker. We are a direct funder. We're holding these assets on our balance sheet. We're servicing uh, our growth plans from sort of soup to nuts. And so ultimately, we need a source of capital that we can draw down on uh, in order to fund these to fund these growth plans. So it's an exercise that I've been doing for several years now, um, even though I've only been at eight fig for about seven months now. That's amazing. I really will say, I, I mean, I'll tell you all more about my story, but I have 
I believe I've told this to you, Jason, but I really do wish that eight fig was around when I was running my company, Shopify capital mm -hmm. was around. AWS was not around. Like these were not opportunities, um, you know, 11 years ago, 12 years ago. And, um, yeah, which, definitely not. Yeah. yeah. Hence why I'm here talking about all the alternatives that we can all do because I, I got there. We can, we can make that right. work. Yeah, yeah, I mean, just sort of zooming out, I've been in the industry, sort of l lending and funding small and medium-sized businesses, uh, really since it started, I would say, you know, the beginning of the 2010s. And really, the, the the mission back then was, can we get businesses to borrow money online? That was right. sort of, the, that was sort of the, that was the, the, the initial goal for really the industry, um, mm -hmm. and the companies that I worked with at that particular point in time. And it's really only in the last five years and really only in the last two to three years where you've started to see a more verticalization of the market where I run a restaurant, I run a doctor's office, I run a nail salon, or I run an e-com business, or I run a CPG brand where you started to see finance companies specifically for those industries. And so it's a lot more specialized uh, than it used to be, but it's still, I would tell you, and I would tell anybody on this, on this, uh, on this call that we're really probably only in the second or third inning of this five years from now, 10 years from now, it's going to be not just funding for e-com businesses. It might be funding for e-com businesses that are specialists in a particular product lines or particular SKUs because your business will cash flow different than an e-com business that's selling a different type of product. There's going to be more and more specialization. Um, and that's a trend that we've seen accelerate a lot in the last couple of years. So that's something that we can touch on, but um do you think we should get started, I, Elizabeth? I think we should. I think we, okay. let's do this. Okay. Hi, everybody. My name's Jason Fleming. I'm the head of revenue here at 8FIG, uh, located here in Austin, Texas. And uh, it is my job to really talk to and manage uh, our sales team here internally, but also talk to lots of customers and lots of prospects. Uh, and we are uh, delighted to have everybody join today. Um, we think that sort of getting our name out there, but getting our name out there with what our mission statement is and how we do things, because we do things a little bit differently than probably some of the other products, financing products that you've you've looked at. And the landscape is changing so quickly that we want to reach out to you know, our e-com sellers out there, our CPG builders out there, and let them know that we're an option, what sort of the lay of the land looks like right now, because it is a quickly evolving situation. And I know all of you wear many, many, many different hats um, running your business, financing your business, getting the inventory that you need for your business, hiring, working with your vendors, um, you know, doing your marketing and to get good information is very, very valuable. And so we're delighted to have everybody here. Um, I'll let Elizabeth introduce herself in a second. Uh, but we're also super glad to have her on the call today and, a little bit about 8FIG, kind of, and I'll, I'll delve into this more. But what we do is we provide funding for growing, emerging e commerce stores, sellers, resellers, brands. If you sell a physical product online, uh, we really want to talk to you. And we think we have a solution that will work for e com brands and resellers. Uh, I'll delve into this more in a few slides, but our funding is really designed to align with your supply chain. And we think this is something that we do a little bit differently than our competitors is we don't provide one round of funding day one, wait for you to pay it all back and let's see where the chips fall. Maybe we can do some additional funding. What we really strive to do is understand your supply chain and your supply chain financing needs from a standpoint of how much money you need, what you need it for, and how much in the timing and the in the rhythm of how often you need to make those expenses and those investments in your business. And the more we can understand that supply chain, the better plans that we're going to be able to build for you and have our funding really align with your supply chain. And the better we can mimic and align with your supply chain, you're going to see your, your purchasing power go up. You're going to see your cash flow go up. You're going to see your ability to grow go up. You're going to have a mind shift uh, in terms of what your objectives are on a day-to-day -day basis, and you'll see that the cost of capital uh, is very attuned and, and very and very will not hurt your margins 
if we can really align the financing with your supply chain. And no two e-com se sellers might have similarities from company to company, but they no two e-com companies are alike and you have different supply chain needs and we want to build our plans around that. And that's sort of our core offering. Uh, I like to tell our customers at the end of the day, we sell money. And if we don't sell money, we don't make any money. Uh, so that's our core offering. Um, and that's quite a bit different. You know, I run into Amazon lending and Shopify capital every single day. They are by no means, the funding is not their core offering. They don't particularly care uh, if you fund with them or not, because they're making money off of you in, in several different ways. And so we make funding our core offering, and we really try to build our growth plans with that in mind uh, to make them as attractive and as effective as possible for, for, for all of our e-com sellers that we work with. But we do offer a lot of free tools that we are very, very, very excited about. We think that cash flow management, categorizing your expenses, trend analysis, inventory control, how's my marketing spend working, um, and really uh, forecasting is probably the most important one. And so we offer a lot of uh, tools, free tools. You don't have to be a funded merchant with us uh, in order to get access to these free tools. Uh, but it really empowers a lot of our brands and our sellers that are out there uh, with much more powerful tools than they might have on their own. And the flywheel that we're trying to create is, yes, get your funding with 8FIG, but also use our free AI CFO tools, and you're going to be much more in control of your business. And something that we're developing and spending a lot of time uh, with our product and engineering team to, to, to make them as easy to use as possible, but as powerful as you need them to be and as insightful as you need them to be. So yes, funding is our core offering, but there's a lot else uh, to look at with 8FIG and there's more tools and, and more capabilities being added all the time. Elizabeth, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. Um, Jason, thank you for having me here today. Um, My pleasure. So yeah, it's fun. Um, so I am a three-time founder. Um, I also just uh, left a company called I Fund Women. We uh, were a funding platform for women-owned businesses. Um, my entire focus has been on how in the world could I get capital for those companies that I had started, had begun. I was early stage, had no idea what I was doing, and just so happened to have a CPG product, product that... Um, that was looked at by Target and asked to be in Target. But what that meant at the time in 2012, when this was going on, that then I had to be in all of the stores. Target didn't have localization or kind of smaller um, uh, distribution. It was all or nothing. They also did a net 90. So for those of you who might not know what a net 90 is, like you're not getting paid for 90 days. So as a... Um, a uh, very small business, had just finished grad school, had just gotten married, trying to find distributor or excuse me, wholesales, found them, but also here's this really incredible opportunity. So what do you do? I started to talk to anybody and everybody about what is out there in the world for a, a company like mine. My company was a gluten-free um, cookie. There was only one other gluten-free cookie company, which uh, they weren't even cookies yet. They were just crackers. This is called Mary's Bond Crackers. And, um, and I had really tough conversations where people were very much like, uh, no, we can't do this. So I got rejected from banks, from VCs. And I, my company was not a VC backable thing. So I turned to friends and family, had a few people do that. And then I turned to Kickstarter. Kickstarter was at the time, for those of you, I'll go into this in just a moment, uh, is a crowdfunding platform. It's all or nothing. And at the time of only about, it's less than 3% of food companies that were on Kickstarter to crowdfund were successful. I happened to be one of them. After that, I ended up getting a lot of people reaching out to me every which way, asking me, how in the world did you do this? What did you do? We'll go into that in just a moment and how I really did that. But more about me is that I have also been doing uh, fundraising and strategy coaching for now over 1,200 companies around the world um, because I'm here to help you figure out what is the best alternative solution for fundraising. When I mean by alternative solution, I think what we're really getting at, what Jason and I were talking about is Anything not kind of your typical VC round. Uh, VC stands for venture capital. Um, we're looking for other opportunities for you because we need to diversify what the funding landscape looks like 
especially for small businesses, especially for um, minority owned businesses, women owned businesses, they all need to find other opportunities. So that is really my skill set and what I am here to do to help all of you today. And then I'm going to go into a few other um, kind of things. Um, just know that I wanted to make sure everybody knew that you can always ask questions in the chat, but we're going to get to questions at the end as well. All right, Jason, next slide. Okay, <clears throat> so um, so I'm going to briefly touch on some of these things. So what are your funding options? Uh, and Jason's going to touch on a few more, and we're going to go in depth uh, on some, some we're just going to kind of briefly do an overview on. So first off, I talked briefly about, I went to a friends and family. What does that mean? Um, my next slide will go more into that. Uh, we'll talk about rewards-based crowdfunding. Jason's going to talk a little bit more about loans and credit. We're going to talk about Reg CF is the jargon that you may hear in, um, in kind of the fundraising landscape, but that's regulated uh, crowdfunding and grants. I'm going to just talk briefly about what grants are. Grants are um, truly the, the best thing if you can have them in the sense of like amazing opportunities for funding for free, but free. I'm going to, and I put that into quotes because grants do come with some stipulations. First off, time, looking for the grants. Yes, for profits, also classify for some grants out there. Also, grants do have some like terms and conditions. You always need to read terms and conditions before ever applying for them. And then lastly, what I want you to do is don't always think about putting everything into that grant basket because it's a you, there's no guarantee that you'll be receiving the grant. So, you know, right? Like you never know. So it could just be this, oh, I need funding. Let me apply for this grant. But what happens if you don't get it? Are you really going to shut down your business? No, you have to find other sources of funding. So grants are great. I think you should apply for them. I never think that you need to put everything into that basket. The other thing is, um, if you are a for-profit, I, I honestly think that grants are the last thing you should go after. People are gonna disagree with me about this, I think. But the reason why is grants for for-profits are usually ranging around five to $25,000. I mean, Jason, have you seen more than that for for-profit companies? That's that sounds about what I've experienced with clients that have had grants that come to Eight Fig. Um, they tend to be pretty small starter capital, um, yeah. and they certainly aren't going to capitalize a business for very long. Uh, if your intention is to you know to grow it for sure. Well, and I don't know if you've seen this too. It's it's a lot of this like <clears throat> you receive a grant and then you have to be a part of the accelerator. <clears throat> excuse me, right. or you have to be. A part of something to be able to receive the funding for it. But honestly, who has the time for all of this when you're like, well, if it's only $25,000, couldn't I just like really like what I didn't actually put on here? Number one thing, build up your revenue, everyone. Uh, what are your funding options? You know, sales. If you could be spending, you know, eight hours a week in an accelerator or eight hours a week on growing your sales, to get that 25,000. That, that's, you know, you, you never know if grants are going to work or not. I never think it hurts to go after them, but just know it is, uh, can be, uh, timely to do so. So, um, let's go and dive into friends and family and then we'll keep going forward. All right. Friends and family. We've all heard this term, maybe, maybe not, but friends and family, it's that initial stage of capital raising for small businesses, uh, that are seeking financial support that are primarily from your personal contacts, such as family members, friends, or acquaintances. Okay, so this is, I did this with my family. I went to my in-laws. I went to my parents. Um, the reason that people do friends and family first is one, oftentimes it's, if you can get your family on board, it's usually a thing of like, all right, I have support in this. This is great. You can also shift the, kind of the terms. You can play around with some of those terms, depending on what your friends and family are giving you. So for instance, um, maybe you are opening a wine bar and you're going after friends and family. And instead of a particular payout, that's like, okay, we're going to do it a very traditional way with a friends and family. You can maybe do, okay, we're going to give you wholesale on the wine here to fourth. We're going to give you some sort of discount or early stage something. This is why people go after friends and family at that. Um, but this is really for alternate or excuse me, for um, early stages. Um, 
Um, I'm kind of reading. Oh yeah. Um, I think this would be your very first. I always like to have people do this before they do any other sort of, of funding. What about you, Jason? Any th thoughts on friends and family? Yeah, actually, I had a question. So um, I assume that a lot of our clients at AidFig have raised friends and family funding um, or leverage, otherwise leveraging whatever personal savings they're bringing into the business when they start it. Um, a lot of our customers are, are using business credit cards or personal credit cards as sort of their line of credit to buy inventory, for instance. Um, but in your experience, Elizabeth, when folks are raising friends and family money, is it typically structured as maybe a you know more of a handshake agreement, pay me back when you can? Is it structured typically as an equity piece that they're giving up in the business? Is it structured maybe more formally as perhaps a balloon payment uh, at the end, but with no maybe smaller interest only payments or no principal and interest payments, but with a balloon payment at the end, what do you, what have you typically seen out there? So all of the above, um, it really depends on first off the state, um, which this is happening. Um, so some states allow for friends and family to be a gift to you, um, up to a certain amount of money. So then there's not necessarily an interest component to it. And you can continue to play around with that kind of, Oh, I can, give a person some some th sort of deal so to speak um but legally after a certain point you do have to do an interest you have to make sure that there is a payout with whatever the the loan that you receive from friends and family gotcha so the tax implications you have to be aware of you have to and that's for every state and this is one thing that for e-commerce i think what people always seem to forget, okay, well, I'm selling e-commerce, so I'm online, so I can go wherever I am. Yes. Now, where is your business located? Where are people actually buying this? You know, we do have to think about uh, the legal implications of everything we're doing. Um, because anytime it comes to fundraising, that is where people are going to say, oh, wait, we need to, we want to, you know, make sure this is legal. And the other thing I wanted to mention when it comes to all the pieces that I was <clears throat> talking about alternative sources of funding, all of these things only happened with it less than 20 years ago. You know, we didn't have, like, it was like accredited investors, venture capitalists, angel investors, and that was really it. And so alternative sources of funding is a very new kind of thing in the long, like in truly in the scheme of fundraising. Um, but yeah, so in friends and family, that's kind of, you have to play around with it. I, I, um, the balloon payment, if anybody else is, um, maybe you've all heard of the safe note. It's kind of the, it's a very similar kind of concept that J Jason was just mentioning, but the idea of you are going to give a person their payout based off of what the the valuation of the company will be in the future. So you're looking at future valuation versus current valuation. And that is what people will be receiving. <laughs> um, that is something I have seen for companies that have probably more of a quintessential um, kind of that hockey stick model of quick growth companies, um, smaller uh, companies, business services, I would not say to do um uh, that sort of strategy for, for friends and family. Got it. Let's talk about, um, next thing, what I did, which is uh, rewards-based crowdfunding. Rewards-based crowdfunding, I talked about Kickstarter, um, but fundraising from friends, family, and your network to reach a goal in exchange for a reward. So why is this different than friends and family? Well, first off is that this is a platform. The platform has a reach that is higher than just your reach. One thing that I will mention on both rewards-based and regulated uh, crowdfunding, which we'll mention in a moment, is that a good portion of any sort of crowdfunding platform, no matter which platform it is, will rely still pretty heavily on your, um, on your network. But why would you go with rewards-based? Well, it means that you can actually access funding from people who might not think that they have the funds to help you. So meaning people who have you know, $20 or $100, they can do that versus, you know, a friends and family. What I want to go back to friends and family is this. You do have to make sure that you've written this all down on, like you have to report any funding that you get. 
This cannot just be a PayPal exchange. Um, it can't just be from Zelle, whatever it is. This is truly uh, why crowdfunding actually started. I mentioned how um, you had to be an accredited investor prior to, I think it was 2008, um, to actually do any sort of investment. Rewards-based crowdfunding was the initial kind of child of, of that idea, which was anybody could actually take and give any portion of money, but it always had to be an exchange for something. So even with friends and family, it has to either be a gift, you have to put it on your taxes, or you have to give them something. Everything is going to have some sort of an exchange. Kickstarter, what I had crowdfunded on, you're going to have a particular, like I, this is, I think one of the top crowdfunding platforms specifically for e-commerce, if you have a CPG product, any sort of physical product, I highly recommend that uh, you look at Kickstarter, um, but they are an all or nothing platform. If you don't reach your goal, you'll see a run to the basketball. Uh, if you do not reach your full goal, you don't get any of the funds. So you do need to know about that. I fund women, which is where I just um, is a great platform. Indiegogo is you, you get you have to do all or nothing. You get to get to you get raise a certain amount and get to keep that. And Seed and Spark. Um, Jason had mentioned earlier about certain types of funding specifically for certain industries. Seed and Spark is really for the entertainment industry. So if you're in an entertainment space, that's a good one for you. So be aware though that platforms do have fees. Know what those fees are. What is your payout going to be? And you need to make sure that you have uh, paid attention to what the cost of your rewards are, your COGS, um, as well as shipping and handling. If you are having a physical reward to people and then what that, you know, payout will actually be, that's what you need to pay attention to. Okay. Elizabeth, can you give a couple of examples or maybe just one example of what a, re a typical reward uh, might be on a, on a crowdfunding platform like this? Yeah, let's do an example for Kickstarter. My husband is a big gamer. So his, um, he will go on to Kickstarter and he'll see that they will do, um, early stage gaming. So any kind of idea stage of a board game, for instance, and then the reward will be the board game itself. So you're paying for it. And why would people do it? Well, pre-sales is really great. You get the first come first serve. You also get to test it out before anybody else. That's really cool. Additional uh, rewards for that particular product would be, um, uh, you know, added add-ons to that, uh, that game. So you know, expansion packs, things like that. Gotcha. Okay. All right. And then the final thing that I'm going to be talking about is regulated crowdfunding. Regulated crowdfunding. This is um, where somebody, I mean, the best way to put it, layman's terms, is somebody is going to give you money to be an investor into your company. So you're having to then make sure that your company is ready to take on outsourced investment, outside investments, um, and really gearing up for having a cap table and what that looks like to really make sure that you have uh, have a business in place to to kind of if that's if you're going after venture capital, this could be a good way to go after. So. Um, what I wanted to note here, so you can go into this top part. This is from the Library of Congress. This quote is, um, regulated crowdfunding enables eligible companies to offer and sell securities through crowdfunding. So parts of your company, uh, in the United States, all regulated crowdfunding transactions must take place online through an SEC registered intermediary. And those are some listed below, either a broker dealer or a funding portal. This is vital. This was this comes from the Library of Congress in 2016. I just mentioned that you can't just do PayPal or Zelle. You know, you, you are a business. You are going to think about one day maybe getting audited. You do have to make sure things are by the books. And this is part of why this, you know, people want to see the, where is the money and where is that pay transparency. Pay transparency meaning that it's not just... Um, how are you utilizing the funds as well as um, who is who are you receiving funds from? So you have to utilize a portal if this is the direction you're going in. Republic is one, Search Engine is another, uh, WeFunder. Uh, those are the top three um, that I actually have worked with all of them. 
they're fantastic, but no different than a crowdfund, like a regular, or excuse me, a rewards-based crowdfunding. You are going to have a campaign page. It's going to be set up online. There's going to be a really cool video. You need to make sure that your pitch is worked on because your pitch that's online needs to make sure that it is translated through an online portal in space versus just somebody on, um, in person, meaning that nobody's going to be able to answer the questions of somebody's like virtually just reading things online and just giving you funding. You do need to be, you know, ready to network, talking to people. The reason that any of these platforms exist also is that first off, they want to see that you have what it takes to make sure that it's a viable business. And so if you are able to bring in X amount of money, that usually turns on the advertising, that turns on their network and really helping push uh, whatever your fundraising is to their, their entire community as well. Um, here's the deal. This is not for early stage companies. This is for those who are making like a certain percentage of revenue. Each of them are different. Uh, so you do need to be aware of what, how much money you're raising or excuse me, how much money you're actually making is because these companies are putting a lot of time and energy to help you raise money. So they want to make sure that you actually are a business that can um, be profitable. And then most funds are raised from people within your network. I mentioned that earlier. And your company must be ready to start taking investors. So that what that looks like is that you're going to probably work with, you need to work with a coach or you need to work with people who know how do you set up your business licenses so that it's um, it can actually take on the form of investments. Would it so, be fair to say that if you're a sole prop and you're looking at regular reg CF that you really want to be, you want to incorporate, you want to incorporate the right way, you want to have all right. that, all the ducks in a row. That's exactly right. That's yeah. exactly right. So you can't just do sole prop. Sorry, y'all. Like, can't just say, hey, I'm going to go take on investments. And I know that every, all of these relate back to, but friends and family and all of, like, they're all the same. They feel like it in a lot of ways, and so, but they're not. The reason why all of this is different is it allows for other people to be able to access the opportunity to be able to invest in you. You have to think about they're looking for opportunities for, let's say, passive income or belief in who you are. Regulated crowdfunding is one way. Friends and family, if they want to, be they believe in you and this is an opportunity for them to make some investment or a return on that, that's great. Um, and then rewards-based crowdfunding um, is, is more of a marketing uh, tool more than anything else. Gotcha. Yeah. So that's it. Any questions about that or any thoughts about that? We can talk about it then. We'll leave. We'll, we'll definitely have some questions uh, near the end, but if anybody wants to pop in and, and, and uh, fire it in the, uh, fire it in the chat or the Q and a chat, um, please feel free. But I guess one thing I wanted to emphasize before um, I take over, cause it's highlighted a couple of things that Elizabeth touched on either directly or indirectly. There are a million reasons to have good bookkeeping and tax planning advice and legal advice, um, not just for the reasons that Elizabeth covered, but those are certainly part of it. So any funds that you're taking into the business, they need to be papered the right way. They need to be documented the right way. Um, they need to be, your legal entity needs to be set up the right way. Um, and you're operating in various states or various countries or various geographies. You have to have good advice in that realm uh, to make sure that you're staying on top of that. So if you're an e-commerce brand, maybe you're registered in Delaware or Wyoming, but you're physically located in Florida um, or California or Texas, um, and you're raising funds from people maybe all over the world or all around the country, there are a lot of layers to that of complexity. And you know, you're not going to get a law degree or uh, a CPA uh, license while you're running your um, while you're running your business and trying to scale your business. So you have to find good people uh, to help you with those sort of just stay on top of the details because um, it's important for a variety of reasons. You're for fundraising, for running your business, for scaling your business, selling your business, um, working with new vendors, working with new co-manufacturers. You want to make sure that your business record is clean and that things are documented properly. Uh, and there are a million reasons for that. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, please feel free to jump in as well um, as I go through uh, some of the eight fig stuff here. So in terms of what we do, as I mentioned, my name is Jason Fleming. I'm the head of revenue here out of our Austin, Texas office for eight fig. Uh, again, what we do, we provide working capital 
exclusively to e-commerce brands and resellers. Uh, our growth plans, which is I would call our core funding offering, we call a growth plan, uh, is up to $10 million and it's really tailored for your business. So if you're an e-com brand or a reseller, um, your business has certain characteristics. We want to understand those characteristics so we can make the growth plan as effective as possible. Soup to nuts, we can typically make funding available within about a week. Um, and you'll have a dedicated account manager um, and chat functionality and all the communication that you need to, to get an idea of where your file is and <clears throat> excuse me, what other follow-up we might need. I mentioned this previously, but we have a lot of free tools covering cash flow management, forecasting, inventory control, and marketing. They're getting better and better and more user-friendly all the time. Uh, and you don't have to be a customer. Uh, you don't have to be a funded merchant of 8Figs in order to access those tools. Um, so do keep that in mind. Uh, so while funding is our core offering, we're really, really passionate about our AI CFO tools because we think it empowers our customers with a lot of tools that have previously been fairly, even if they were accessible, you might need you know, a bookkeeping background or an op a really hardcore operating background or financial analysis background to really get the most out of it. And what we're trying to do is drive the tools that big companies take for granted down to emerging e-com brands and resellers. And they're totally free and you don't have to be a funded merchant of ours. Uh, minimum eligibility for a growth plan. We're typically looking for at least 12 months of selling history. Um, if you're between six and 12 months and you think that your store is showing a lot of passionate potential, I would always tell you that it doesn't hurt to apply. Um, and at least $100,000 in annual revenue. One of the reasons why it doesn't hurt to apply with us ever is there never, ever a personal credit check with 8FIG. We don't pull personal credit. We don't look at it. We're really evaluating the business characteristics, uh, what you need moving forward and what your historical sales have been like. And we don't emphasize personal credit. So there's never cost a thing to apply and there's no credit check to apply. So there's really nothing to lose. So if you are an e-com brand or reseller, maybe think you're a little bit in that, if you're on the fence or if you're in that gray area, I would tell you, give us a shot. One, you'll get access to the free AI CFO tools, even if we can't fund you. Uh, we'll let you know when you are eligible for funding uh, because we'll have uh, the access to the data that we need in order to make that decision. Um, and three, there's no credit check. So there's really no harm in applying with us. So growth plans, let's take a closer look at that. The core goal of what we Basically, do. I had in yeah. real quick and just sure. ask, um, can we add a link into specifically the application um, for people to apply? Is that just that eight fig? Like.co? Yeah. So our website is 8fig.co. Perfect. I'll, I'll put that in there for everyone. Excellent. And there is a, 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 a get funded button in the upper right hand corner. That's going to drop you into our application, which you actually see a portion of on this slide right here. So our goal is really to understand and then finance the supply chain expenses of emerging e com sellers. That's why we get up in the morning. That's why we build all the technology that we build. And so the, the, the little uh, screenshot that you see here is a portion of our onboarding application. Um, during onboarding, users are going to answer a few simple questions related to the following expenses, manufacturing, shipping, logistics, and marketing. So I got to get the product. I got to move the product. And I got to let people know that the product is there so they can buy it. Uh, on my website or my Amazon store, whatever the case may be. So for instance, this screenshot here is a very, this is what you would fill out uh, for the manufacturing expense line item. So all we ask is how often do you pay for manufacturing? How much do you pay when you do pay for it? And when is your next manufacturing payment? And you're going to answer those three questions for each of these expenses. So the next one you would see would be shipping, logistics, and marketing takes about maybe two to three minutes to fill these out. Um, we do encourage you to spend time um, at least getting a good estimate of what those expenses are and when you need them. Uh, because the goal is by answering these questions, it gives us a pretty darn accurate numerical representation of what your supply chain expenses are going to be for typically a period of at least six to 12 months, depending on what dates you put in there. Um, and so we want to build a plan with those dollars and with those dates in mind 
because we can provide just-in-time funding or a continuous injection of capital into your business in the amount that you need when you need them. And this eliminates a huge problem that has really existed in the industry for a long time was most companies, and this is still the case, Amazon, Shopify, they're going to provide 100% of the capital that they think that you can afford to pay back. And it's kind of a dumb or it's an inelegant way of funding an e-commerce business uh, because it really puts the onus on you to be very disciplined about your cash management and scrimp and save. And it doesn't leave a lot of room for adjustments. And fundamentally, your business supply chain is going to, whether you finance it or not, your business, your supply chain is going to, is going to be, it's a moving target. And so we want to provide funding that aligns with that supply chain. And so a huge problem that's existed in the industry, one of the reasons why the rates are so high, one of the reasons why they don't seem to work very well is this mismatch between a lump sum of funding day one and the actual reality of what my, your supply chain is. And so you might be sitting on cash that you can't use effectively for the business, or you might be underfunded at the time that you actually need additional working capital. And so what this, it just leads to a very, can lead to a very sloppy funding experience where you're sort of cash poor when you need to be cash rich and you're cash rich when you don't really need to be and you're paying for money that you're not able to deploy. Um, so this eliminates that problem greatly by understanding the supply chain and building the financing around it. We can continuously finance the working capital that you need and when you need it. And you're not sitting on funds that you can't use, and you're not underfunded when you really need to make additional investments in the business. And so because of that, we're able to drive down our cost of capital, fix your supply chain, fix your working capital needs. And that, that is a profound behavioral and mind shift for our clients when they're able to get in that mode. And that's something I'll talk about a little bit more. So this is a, an example of a growth plan that we might offer. For a merchant. In fact, it is a growth plan that we uh, have uh, offered to a merchant, and I've redacted all the, the 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 identifying information. But this is what a growth plan can look like from 8fig. So at the top, we have some summary information here. We're going to provide this merchant six million two hundred seventy eight thousand dollars of capital in the growth plan. Their cost of capital is going to be five hundred sixty five thousand two hundred forty six. I haven't done that math, but that's about nine cents on the dollar or something like that. Um, their first disbursement was going to be for five hundred thousand uh, dollars, actually today, and so you'll see a schedule of remittances and fundings here. So when I said a, a slide ago that we don't provide the six point two million or a lump sum up front, um, we're not providing that day one. We're providing that over the course. Oh on. How do I get back? There we go. Uh, we're providing that over the course of typically 12 to 18 months. And it gets cut off here, but you would see if you added up everything in this funding column, it would equate to 6278000 And then if you added everything up in this remittance column, it's going to that's what they remit back to us, back to 8FIG. And it will add, it will be 565246 plus the $6.3 million that we've provided in funding. And this is how 8FIG makes money, is that cost of capital. There are no fees uh, of any kind other than the cost of capital. There's no origination fees. There's no onboarding fees. There's no, there, this is the entire cost of capital. And it assumes that you take all the disbursements uh, in your 8FIG growth plan. But if you were to look more closely at this particular business, what you would see is that this business needs money pretty much every single month. They don't need money in the same amount every single month, but they need to spend $500,000 in March to finance their supply chain, another 520 in April, another 500 in May, another 500 in June. Then we take a little bit of a breather kind of in the fall period where they need lesser amounts of money. And so we're timing the disbursements with when they need to make additional investments in the business. And no two businesses are going to be alike. I have clients that only need to buy inventory quarterly, but they run marketing weekly. Um, I have clients that don't do much marketing at all, um, and they need to buy inventory. They buy inventory all the time. Uh, it just depends on your particular business. How, how closely are you working with your co-manufacturer? How big are your order sizes? 
how quickly does your inventory turn? A food product is going to have a much different turn than a home good, for instance. Um, so it really depends. Those businesses are very different. Yes, they're both e-com businesses, but they're very different fundamentally in terms of how their supply chain works. And so by you answering the questions on this slide, uh, when you apply with us, you're going to give us that understanding of your supply chain and your plan might look similar to this, but it might look you know, at a high level. But when you zoom in and you're going to see that it's very, the, the objective is for us to attune it very much to your supply chain. And so the result is continuous capital injections and the amount you need when you need them for your business, not for, not for somebody else's business. So Jason, I'm going to ask yes. you about this and if sure. you can go back to the slide right before, mm -hmm. um, yeah, this one. Um, so, so I'm assuming the red is the influx of cash. Um, it's hard to see. The, the green here are represent okay, persons. It, yes, and the red represents remittances to us. So yes. for all a lot of e-commerce companies and mm -hmm. trying to figure out predictability and forecasting, um, you had mentioned at the beginning that Eight Fig offers opportunities and help for like with account management once you're in the system itself and if yes. been a, but a lot of companies don't really know how to forecast um e-commerce stuff they they haven't quite yeah. figured that part out how are you able to help companies get to that is there anything that eight fig provides or redirects people to um because i know that that a lot of folks that i talk to they're like how do, how do i know what's happening here but i need to apply for cash now so so how do they they know uh, how to really help uh, make sure that they are right fit for 8FIG. Yeah. So um, in terms of forecasting, that's one of the tools that are free. So once you have, and you don't even have to be a funded merchant. In fact, the, the forecasting will happen if you connect your bank account and connect to some of your other, your operating store, because um, that gives us the data that we need in order to make forecasting. That's one of the things that I'm super, super uh, happy about that we're developing. Um because when I first heard about our forecasting tools, I was like, oh, well, then you got to be an expert on accounting and you got to be an expert on supply chain and you got to be an expert on any number of things. Um, and it turns out once I got a demo from our engineering team, I, I was under a misapprehension because what we're really doing is we're looking at your business, what you've done, what your historical cash flow has looked like and how you manage your inventory. And all of that is calculatable. It's just data at the end of the day. And so with all the investments in AI and machine learning, we can take your business in your particular category, look at your individual historical sales and cash flow characteristics and benchmark it against thousands and thousands and thousands of other companies within your, say, product category or within your, if you're an Amazon seller, how do you compare to other Amazon sellers? Or if you're a Shopify seller, how do you compare to other Shopify sellers? And the forecasting will be done for you. And you can toggle, you can play with the forecasting because maybe you're launching an additional marketing campaign or you're launching a new product and you think that the performance of that particular product or marketing campaign is going to be X. You can do all kinds of scenario analyses, but we bring you much closer to the point where you can actually do that without having to have some sort of expertise in accounting or supply chain. Um, I don't have a demo in this particular slide deck, but... Um, Go to 8fig.co and you'll see, you know, connect your stuff and you'll see the types of forecasting that we can do. And it's, it's, we think it's going to be very powerful and we think it's going to be a game changer. And we think it's, we know that they're getting better at the time, all the time. We, we have updates all the time. So it's something that we're very passionate about and they're free. We don't, you don't have to be a funded merchant of ours. Um, Okay. So just a couple more things, you know, we're a closer look, eligible e-commerce platforms that we work with right now, Amazon, Shopify, eBay, Magento, big commerce, WooCommerce. We're working on adding additional platforms. TikTok, we'll see. Um, Walmart. Uh, there's a couple of others that we want to get onboarded as well. I think we're perfect for multi-platform, multi-channel sellers. So I run into Amazon lending and Shopify capital all the time. Uh, our clients have used them. They continue to use them, but they're taking a look at 8fig. Uh, I think we work great for companies if you're selling on Amazon and Shopify, or if you're selling on Shopify and eBay, or if you're selling on eBay and Amazon, uh, because we're going to incorporate all of your sales when we evaluate your business. Shopify Capital is only ever going to look at Shopify. Amazon's only ever going to look at Amazon. Amazon, I guess, I don't know if you guys have heard, is actually not lending directly anymore. Uh, they're only doing third-party stuff now. So 
I think it's too early to tell what the consequences of that will be because they just announced it like a week ago. Um, but the ground is constantly shifting. And I think we're an ideal uh, partner if you're selling on, say, Amazon and Shopify because we take a look at everything. Flat cost of funds, you're typically looking at 7 to 11% cents on the dollar, if you want to call that a percentage, uh, on every dollar funded, there are no other fees of any kind, no credit checks, no origination fees, no nothing like that. Typically, our plans are going to be anywhere from 12 to 18 months in duration. So we're looking to get that understanding of your supply chain financing needs over 12 to 18 month time frame. sometimes a little bit shorter than 12 months, but typically you're going to see a 12 to 18 month plan. It is never our intention, and it is our hope and expectation with every client. Um, it's never our intention to run a plan from soup to nuts, like a 12 to 18 month plan without making some sort of adjustment. Ideally, you're gonna use us to finance your supply chain. And now you're in growth mode. Now you're trying to play offense with the brand. You're gonna increase your sales. Might, might result in needing more working capital. And that's when we might come in and roll you in a new plan well before the expiration of the plan that we activate you on the day one. Um, cause that is our goal to finance. I probably should have mentioned this sooner. Eight fig is short for eight figures. If you're an eight figure seller already, we can help you. We want to help you grow. But if you're not an eight figure seller, you're not doing $10 million a year in revenue. We really want to work with you. And we think helping you finance will allow you to get to eight figures. Obviously you have to have the right product and you have to have, you know, have to run a great business, there's certain things we can't help with that, but if it's financing that you need, we think we can. This can be a catalyst for growth, and we've seen plenty of customers go from five, six, seven, up to eight figure sales in a pretty short period of time. Once they start using financing with eight fig, because it has these benefits in terms of allowing them to to really scale their business. Uh, ultimately, we're going to send the funds directly to you. So we talk about supply chain a lot. You might think that we're going to send the money to your vendors. That is not the case. Uh, the money goes directly to you. So you decide how you want to deploy the funds into your business. And something that Elizabeth touched on, dedicated account executive and account manager. Account executive is to get you to the point where you get you activated on your first plan. So sort of new business generation, somebody to walk you through those steps, answer all your questions, get adjustments made. Um, and then an account manager, dedicated account manager, after we activate your growth plan, your account manager will be there. We'll help you walk through all the tools that we have and any adjustments after your plan is done. So what we think the eight fig difference ultimately is, um, a non eight fig e-commerce brand and an eight fig powered e-commerce brand are going to have two, one major similarity. And this is why we exist as a company. This is why really any of our competitors exist is you do not get credit terms from your manufacturers or your suppliers. That is fundamental to e -com. Only the very largest, well, most well-established brands are gonna get trade credit from their, from their manufacturers and their suppliers, net 30 terms, net 60 terms. And then if you're on the CPG and you're selling into retail chains, you might have to float net 30, net 60 terms on the sales side. But by and large, I, that's not something 8FIG can do for you. Um, you have to get to a certain size and then they'll start offering you credit terms, perhaps if ever. So why did, why does that matter? Well, because if you're an eight fig powered e-commerce brand, now you can bridge that gap with our financing. And if you're not with eight fig or your business is not properly financed, you're go always going to live with the reality of what the, of what the consequences of not getting trade credit from your manufacturers are. And it can lead to worries about day-to-day -day cash flow, stagnant sales, and every day feels like a fight and your focus is on short-term survival. If you finance properly with 8FIG, which is our objective, you get out of that mind shift. You get it out of that mindset and you have a mind shift. And instead of worrying about day-to-day -day cash flow, you get up in the morning and you're thinking about, how do I get more eyeballs on the brand? What new products do I need to introduce? How do I stay ahead of my competition? Is my marketing agency working? Um, is my ad spend working? You're focused more on those long-term things that are really going to grow the brand in the long run. And you really get out of that short-term survival mode and your focus becomes long-term victory. And because we take out, we bridge that financing gap, cash flow being the lifeblood of any small business, now you can really try to build a business to last and to scale. And that's what we think our funding can do for everybody that we work with. So we have five minutes left. Um, take down our information here. If there, I think I do see a couple questions here. 
Um, Khaled asks if we work with Canadian e-commerce stores. The answer, Khaled, is yes. Um, I don't want to bore everybody with the details or a couple of additional hoops to jump through. Hopefully in the future, it'll be much easier for us to work with Canadian merchants, but we do have Canadian clients right now. Um, we have overseas clients that are running uh, businesses registered in the United States. Um, so we'll talk about, we can, we, we can have a discussion with you. Uh, uh, what those particular parameters are. But yes, we do work with Canadian e-commerce stores. Uh, how many disbursements, individual fundings would I get from 8FIG? So this is something that we touched on in the last couple of slides. It depends. It's never. It's always more than one. I can tell you that. Um, and then there's no real cap on it. Um, but we typically ask for how it really depends on how often you need to finance your supply chain, how often do you need to pay for your manufacturing in particular, and that will drive the number of disbursements that we'll tend to give. So if you're somebody that buys monthly, you can probably expect you know, disbursements, 10 to 12 disbursements a year from us. If you buy quarterly, that's going to look better like four. If it's biannually, you know, there's going to uh, about two months. Uh, uh, or once every six months, twice a year. So it just really depends on your particular business because no two businesses supply chain is the same. How do you determine how big my plan will be? Again, it is based on your supply chain. With the caveat though, it has to be realistic to your historical sales. So when you come in, let's say you're doing $500,000 a year and you answer our onboarding questions and you represent that the business has the expenses of a $5 million a year business, you might have every intention of getting to $5 million a year, and we would love to help you out with that. But the reality is you're not a $5 million a year business yet. And so we have to govern how big the disbursements are going to be and how big the plan ultimately is a little bit by your uh, by your historical sales. And then we want you to grow into it because you don't necessarily need all of that money right then and there. You know, How do you get from a half a million dollar a year to a seven-figure business, to a $3 million a year business, then to a $5 million a year business? And we can scale the financing as you lock in more growth. So ultimately, you might have the plan of a $5 million a year business, but if you're a $500,000 business right now, just to be responsible funders and not over leverage you, we do have to take a look at the historical sales and make sure that we're sizing the deal appropriately. And then you'll see one natural question that we always get is, do I need to take all the disbursements, fundings? And if not, how much, how does that affect the cost? You are not obligated to take all the disbursements. If you don't need them anymore, um, you can, you can, you don't have to take them and you will only pay the cost of capital associated with what you've taken out. However, we think we want to build a long-term partnership with you, a long-term relationship with you and think about your financing, not just over the next 30, 60 or 90 days. If you get funded from 8FIG or from anybody else, is that fundamentally going to get you, is that fundamentally going to change the nature of your business on the supply side? Are you now getting trade credit from your vendors? Probably not. So you need to think about not just the cycle upcoming, but the cycles and how are you going to finance those cycles moving forward? Uh, because if you take one disbursement from us, you're still going to have to pay that disbursement back, of course. Uh, but you, that financing need is going to recur because the bridge, the, the gap is ultimately driven by by your supply chain. And so we're looking to finance that over the long run. And then Carlos asks, how much money is needed to be generated per month in order to receive funding from 8FIG? Typically, Carlos, $8,000 a month in the last three months is sort of the recent funding volume that we're looking for. Uh and then our higher level criteria, you know, if 12 months time in business of selling history and at least $100,000 a year annually, um, that's that's what we're looking for. But if you're looking, what do you need to be doing recently? $8,000 a month in the last three months is kind of where our minimums are. If you don't meet those criteria, we still encourage you to take a look at us because you get access to all the free tools. And then as soon as you are eligible, you'll get notified by us. Oh, one question in the chat. Um... Nate asks, are your loans secured, unsecured? If secured, against what? Uh, Nate, it's important to understand we're not, I wouldn't expect you to know this because not something I ever said, but we're actually not a lender. Uh, we do not have lending agreements, loan agreements, lines of credit. You won't be in debt to us. We're, we're not a borrower. We're not a lender. Uh, that's from a regulatory and legal standpoint. What we are actually doing in order to generate the financing is to purchase your future receivables on an ongoing basis. And so we provide funding, um, but the part about secured, unsecured, we do file UCC. 
my perspective, Nate, if you, nobody does, if you don't know what a UCC filing is, it's a filing that is made at uh, the Secretary of State of whatever state that you're operating in. It's a matter of public record, um, and it secures our interests in our funding. And it is a general UCC filing against the assets of the business. We do not require to be in any certain position. So if you're already financed with the SBA, I know a lot of you've got COVID relief loans, for instance, they're typically going to be in first position or they're going to have a UCC filing. Um, we don't need to be in any particular seniority position. Um, ultimately, if you can't make the payments, our objective is to give you a plan where you can make the payments and have an ongoing line of communication. You know, our, the collateral itself is not going to be worth much to us. Um, you know, you're in the widget, you're in the widget selling business. You're the expert. If you can't make the payments, what are, what are we going to be able to do with the widgets? It's kind of one of those situations. Um, so really we don't want to enforce our rights under the UCC filing unless we absolutely have to. It's more about let's have an open line of communication. We have plenty of customers that run into snags. Anything can happen in e-com. Inventory falls off the back of a box truck, a boat sinks, gets held up at Long Beach uh, or at Port. And we've all seen what happened, you know, the last couple of years with the supply chains. Um, just talk to us. We'll, we'll 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 get it straightened out, and we'll make sure that you stay on track. And um, you know, before we have to go down the road of you know looking at security and and our collateral and that sort of thing. Looks like it's twelve o'clock on the dot. Good job. That was really good. Um, can I say one final thing, which is, yes. as Jason said, and I know if you are a small business on this call today and you're like, I am not reaching that hundred, like, K okay, ARR, what do I do? And yep. that's why we had this. And when Jason and I were talking about, that's why alternative sources of funding are here <laughs> so that you start somewhere and you have options to get us to, um, well, to get all of you to eight figs so that you can continue. Yes. I'm glad you said that. Um, companies that are undercapitalized, if you're just starting out, you know, you can have the greatest product in the world. Um, you can be the best salesperson, write the most beautiful copy, have the most beautiful landing pages on your website or your Amazon store. If you're undercapitalized going into that process, it's going to be more of a struggle. I'm not saying you can't do it. We have plenty of customers that succeed or coming in pretty undercapitalized. But what Elizabeth is touching on is you want to be as ca well capitalized as you possibly can be. Um, you obviously don't want to have to sell your whole company um, and work for somebody else, but you want to have enough. You want to have as much capital as you possibly can to do the things that you want to do, to work with the suppliers that you want to work with, to set, to 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 buy the inventory that you want to buy, to run the marketing campaigns that you want to run, to do the branding and, and write all the beautiful copy and the. And uh, and have the beautiful landing pages and the beautiful website and all the you know smooth checkout options. You want to have all of that dialed in as much as you possibly can. That takes money, and so you don't want to be undercapitalized going into this process. Or as maybe you're starting starting to pick up some traction and pick up some sales, and maybe you're not quite at the eight fig metrics yet. You also want patient capital at this stage of the business. So if you're looking to raise investor capital. Um, you have to give up a piece of the business, but you don't have to pay the money back. Eight figure, you have to pay the money back because we're looking to get you know a seven, eight, nine percent return on our money, and your investor is looking to get a ten x return on their money. So they're willing to sacrifice getting regular payments back. Um, so that's patient capital. So you want to have patient capital, and you want to have you know, be as well capitalized as you possibly can be uh, going into you know scaling and starting your ecom brand because it's just going to make everything else that follows much much easier. And you'll be in a better position to borrow um, or fund with 8FIG uh, as a result too. And you'll just be able to have a lot more freedom. The good news is, is everybody else is in the same boat, folks. None of your competitors are getting trade credit from their suppliers. I promise you, um, if they are, they're lying. Um, if they tell you they are, they're lying. Um, so everybody's in the same boat. And if you're well-financed, that is a source of competitive advantage. You start working with the best co-mans. You start having the best listings and the best rankings on your on your on your on your product listings, and you really start to nudge out your competition. So, using capital as a source of competitive advantage is is, is super important. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Jason, this is great for everyone else there. I put my LinkedIn um, in to the chat. Um, best way to get a hold of you, you at Jason, it looks like is just howdy at eightfig.co. Yeah or jason at 8fig.co. There you go, everyone.
Okay. And you can come to the website and apply um, and you can chat in as well. So we look forward to hearing from as many people as possible. Tell your friends, tell your family. Uh, we're going to be around and um, big things coming for sure. Well, thanks for having me. Thank you all for being here. Thanks, Elizabeth. Pleasure. Bye. Thank you, everybody.